All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our TensorFlow course, and we're still doing our malaria model evaluation and testing module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. As you can recall, yesterday we had some hiccups with the actual compiling of our code. So now we're not going to do any compiling today. We're just going to read over some notes and then, yes, let me show you where we're at now. So here we will evaluate our model using a Lynette model. Before we can evaluate our data set, we have to alter our test data set shape so that everything is compatible. We can do that by performing actions below. You can see we have the test data set equals test data set dot batch one. Now we can evaluate our model, the net model dot evaluate test data set. We would actually evaluate our model using that code right there. Now here's what we get once we evaluate our model. I'll have the output here for you tomorrow so we can go over that. Next, note that we could continue with this training. So we could train for more epics as opposed to what we have now. Many scientists have made the remark that they have forgotten to stop the training and then came back to notice that they've gotten an even better performing model because they allowed the model to train for a longer time frame. Now, after evaluating our model, let's look at how to do model predictions. Now, the whole idea of model predictions makes sense since we have trained our model on inputs and outputs. So, originally, this is what we have here. We have our model and we have our inputs in our outputs being fed into our model to get some kind of a solution there. And now we want to pass in an input and let our model automatically come up with the output. So we want to change to this kind of dynamic here. We want to put it out. We want to put an input in the model and have the model output an output for us. So we don't want to have this model here where we have to out put the output in the input into the model. We want to put the input into the model and have the model spit out an output. Now this is to say whether the image contains an infected cell or uninfected cell. So this is the output that we want. We want to get the results of either the cell is parasitized or not parasitized. And with that said, all we need to do is run this model predict code. So we have our predict method, and then we pass in our data. And then we specify that we want to take one value from the data set using the dot take. Now we can run our model dot predict. So this is the code that we're going to run, the Lynette model dot predict, test data set dot take one, zero, zero. And this is the output we're going to record. Or, or, this is the output that we're going to uh, record and put here after I run everything in compile and have that for you tomorrow. Now we define this method parasitize or not, which is defined such that if we have an input X, then if that X is less than 0.5, consider that we have a parasitized cell. And if it's greater than or equal to 0.5, then it's an unaffected cell. Recall that the way that the data was created was such that the parasitized was zero and the unaffected was one. So we have a threshold of 0.5. This threshold value is, defi is defined now such that every value less than it is Every value less than it is considered parasitized and everything greater is considered uninfected. So this is the algorithm we have to actually came up with to represent that. We have a defined parasitized or not X. If X is less than 0.5, return the string P, meaning parasitized. Else return string U, meaning uninfected. We have our parameters here. P equals 0. Un N equals 1. Now, if we wanted, we could alter our code to be even more precise and include our parasitized or not function. So, as you saw up here, we had the Lynette model predict test data set. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and you know, just attach that to our, or pass that as a parameter to our parasitized or not function, and then run it as a whole to get an even more precise algorithm so we can run everything at once. Now, the output is going to go here as to what that output is after I compile everything and have it for you tomorrow. So we're going to do testing on nine different elements. So we specify our nine with the dot take, and then we do our subplots. First, we do the image show, and we specify zero because we don't want batch dimensions. And then we have our title. In the title, we have the actual output, and we have the model's predicted output. Now we can run the code below. So this is going to be the last code that we're going to actually run. So we have the four I image and labels and enumerate test data set dot take. Here's our nine. This is our subplots here, meaning we want a three by three of our images. So we're supposed to get a subplot of nine images divided into three by threes. This is how we're going to show the image with the image show. And then this is our title here, string parasitized or not. So every image should be labeled with either parasitized or uninfected. And then this is our PLT access. That's just the access being taken off for our image dimensions. And this is I added this myself to PLT.show. The instructor didn't add that, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to need it as we needed it last time to actually show our images. So that's where we're at now for our TensorFlow course. Like I said, I'm not going to do any compiling because I'm pretty sure it's going to take forever to compile. But I will compile it overnight and I will uh, 
print the answers here to the uh, to the lesson plan, and then I'm actually going to leave it in the terminal so we can see it also. But yeah, that's where we're at so far, and of course, I will keep you guys posted every step of the way. But for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.